Hi, I'm David Antoff. I'm a faculty at UC Berkeley. Today I'm going to show you a new software package that we released that makes it very simple, transparent, and easy to replicate the social cost of greenhouse gas estimates that EPA and uh, federal government have used for more than a decade. Before I jump onto the computer and show you how you can download this uh, piece of software and how you can run it and estimate the social cost of carbon, I want to say a quick uh, word of thanks to two particular uh, parties. Uh, first of all, a lot of the work that I am showing you today was actually done by Cora Kingdon, who is a researcher at Resources for the Future. So I, uh, she deserves a lot of the credit for the actual work um, of, uh, on the software that I'm going to show you today. Uh, and the second thing uh, goes to the Sloan Foundation, who has generously funded the uh, joint RFF Social Cost of Carbon initiative that has uh, funded a lot of the software development that I'm going to show you today. Um, so the, my lab uh, has worked for a couple of years now on a software platform called Mimi that is a open source uh, a software platform for building integrated assessment models. And some of the goals we have with Mimi is to make it cheaper to run replication code, make it uh, more transparent, uh, build a really performant platform, and generally move uh, the uh, ways in which we build integrated assessment models uh, forward. Uh, this has been a great success. Uh, we have lots of different, lots of different integrated assessment models of these uh, on this platform. And today we're going to release another piece of this puzzle, namely the replication code that precisely replicates what the EPA and the federal government uh, did in uh, with the social cost of carbon estimates a couple of years ago. Uh, so why might you be interested in doing that? Um, so first of all, EPA has always been great and transparent about uh, how they computed their social cost of carbon. Uh, you were always able to get a replication code from them, and then if you understood it, uh, you could run it and modify it and so on. But it was uh, not easy uh, to grog. <laughs> and the reason for that is that um, the three models that they used were all programmed in different programming languages. Some of the uh, models required you to buy commercial software to run things. So it was really difficult for students, for example, to uh, run these uh, replication exercises because you actually had to uh, spend a significant amount of money before you were able to even uh, try out anything. Uh, and just the expertise to be able to run all three different models is, was, was complicated to, to do that. And so with this new software that we're releasing today, the MIMI IWG package, everything runs in one programming language, everything is open source, you don't uh, need to buy any software to run anything. Um, the platform we're using is called the Julia Language Platform, and that is open source. So we hope that this makes it much easier uh, for researchers to rerun the replication code, maybe modify things and try out things by themselves. So in this video, I'm going to show you a, a very short introduction of how to run uh, the code that we've produced and how you can estimate the social cost of carbon and how you can peek under the hood of the three models that were used if you want to understand other variables that are computed inside these models. This video is really only uh, a peek. Um, the platform is much more powerful, uh, and I encourage you um, to explore it further uh, beyond what I can show in this video. At the end of this video, I will give you a couple of ideas how you, uh, what your next steps could be if you want to explore this further. So I'm going to start with a completely uh, fresh install of Windows. So there's absolutely nothing installed on this system. And I'm going to show you how you can get Julia installed and then the IWG replication code and how you can start to look at a first set of uh, results from this uh, replication code. So the first step is that we want to install Julia itself. Uh, to do that, we uh, go to julialang.org. Uh, that's the domain of the Julia programming language. Uh, and here we click on the download uh, button for this uh, version here. This is the currently uh, stable version, 1.5.3. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, click here on the 64-bit installer. If you're on Mac OS, um, you would download this uh, version here for Mac OS. If you're on Linux, well, if you're on Linux, you will probably be able to figure all of this out by yourself and don't need any help. Uh, so I'm going to download this. The download finished. Um, I, I, I will open the download of Julia, uh, and that will um, start the uh, installation program for Julia itself. And I'm just going to uh, 
accept all the default uh, options here. There's actually nothing that you need to change, so I'm just going to click on Next, and then I'm going to click on Next again, uh, and this will install Julia on your system, and there's really nothing else you need to do uh, beyond that. Once that is finished, uh, I'm going to click Finish, and now we have an icon on the desktop that can start uh, Julia. So I'll double-click that, uh, and here we are uh, inside uh, Julia. The next step is that we want to update the information that Julia has about packages that uh, are available and are stored in the cloud and that uh, we can easily install on the system. And to do that, I'm going to um, go into a mode in Julia here that's called the package REPL. And this is a mode within Julia where you can install uh, packages from the cloud into your system. And to enter that code, you have to press uh, the key for the closing square brackets. So if you press that, then your prompt in here uh, changes and it uh, shows this uh, PKG uh, prompt and that indicates that you're in the package uh, mode here. And, and to update the information that we locally have about uh, available packages, we first want to um, execute the command update and then just press enter. This will take a little while, so I'm going to actually cut this out uh, and come back once this command has finished. If this is the first time that you've installed Julia on your system, it is really crucial that you execute this update command at this point here before you do the next step that I'm going to talk about, uh, because otherwise uh, you can end up with a system in a state that is uh, uh, not ideal, uh, and then you have to fix certain things. So please make sure to run this update command uh, before you uh, move on to the next step. So now uh, we finished uh, updating the information about uh, packages in the Julia cloud um, and can move on to the next step. The structure of the Julia package ecosystem is that there is one global repository in the cloud where most Julia packages live and are stored. And we just updated the information about that global repository. It's also often called the general registry for Julia packages. All the climate models and integrated assessment models that we have created as part of the RFF, uh, Social Cost of Carbon Initiative, are actually not stored in the general registry. Instead, we have our own registry for MIMI models um, where all of those are stored. And so the next step that we need to do is that we need to, that we need to tell our local installation of, of Julia about this other online repository where all these integrated assessment models are stored. And so that's the next command I'm going to execute right now. And the command for that is the following. Again, in the package manager here, I'm going to write registry add. So this command adds a new registry to our system. And then we need to type in the URL uh, of that particular registry. And um, the uh, URL is uh, the following one. I'm actually going to uh, put a link uh, for that uh, registry into the uh, description section of this video here so that you don't have to uh, copy that here from uh, this video. Um, but this is the URL you put in here, and then we execute uh, this particular command. And of course, I have a typo in here. Um, let's correct this and try again. All right, so now we have that registry uh, added as well. And at this point, uh, we are ready to install the MIMI IWG replication package. And in order to install the MIMI IWG replication package, we simply say add in the package manager. That's the, command, the general command to add packages. And then we give it the name of the package that we want to install. Uh, in this case, it's called MIMI IWG. Uh, and what Julia does now is it goes out into the cloud, it looks in uh, the two registries that it's talking to, the general one and the one that we maintain, whether there is a package called MIMI IWG, uh, and it has found it, and it will now install that package and anything else that this package requires onto your local system. So these package installation commands are commands that you only need to run once, uh, and once you have installed these things on your system, uh, you don't have to do that every time you start Julia uh, anew. So at this point, um, this command finished, and what has happened now is that uh, all the three models that uh, were used by the IWG uh, group were downloaded and installed on your system. So you now have uh, DICE, PAGE, and FUND installed. You have exactly the versions installed that correspond to the versions that were used by the IWG. So uh, it's actually using slightly older versions of each of these models, the versions that were used in the original IWG exercise. Uh, you have the MIMI framework installed automatically on your system, and then you have a whole bunch of code installed 
that uh, can replicate the exact computations that the IWG group did when they uh, computed their official social cost of carbon numbers. Um, so these steps that I've shown so far are steps that you only need to do once, and once everything is installed on your system, uh, you can just load things into your running Julia session every time you want to explore something. And that's what I'm going to show you next. So now we're in a Julia session here, uh, and I'm just going to load uh, the package Mimi IWG so that I have access to all the uh, functionality in that package. So now we've loaded Mimi IWG into Julia, uh, into this uh, running instance of Julia, and we can now call functions within the package that do various things. And I'm only going to show you a few. There are actually more in the package, but uh, this is only a short introduction. The first function that we're going to call is called Mimi IWG dot compute SCC. And this will, as the name says and indicates, compute the social cost of carbon. The first uh, argument that we want to pass here is the name of the model that we actually want to run. So I'm going to um, pass in here, let's say, dice, if I want to do this for dice. Um, and then I also uh, want to say which scenario I want to uh, use for this exercise. Uh, I'm going to uh, give it the USG1 scenario name here. Uh, the uh, precise definitions of which scenarios you can check here, you can find in the readme document for the MIMI IWG package. So as we run this, uh, we're getting uh, a couple of warnings. Um, though You can ignore those. Uh, essentially, it's just telling us, because we didn't tell it um, what whether we want to compute the social cost of carbon or the social cost of methane, it's just going to go with uh, CO2. Um, because we didn't tell it what emissions year we want to uh, have, it's just going to go with uh, the year 2020. And because we also didn't explicitly specify a discount rate, it's just going to do it for 3%. Uh, and there we have it, uh, $43. Uh, um, so this is pretty simple. You can probably already guess um, that we could change this. So let's say we want to compute this for a different discount rate. Uh, we could just say discount uh, equals, let's say, uh, 2%. So we pass in uh, 0.02 here. And then uh, it's going to compute everything in the same way, but now it's going to use a different discount rate, namely a 2% uh, discount rate. So uh, this uh, compute SEC function is the main entry point for you if you want to compute social cost of carbon or social cost of methane or any other gas um, uh, estimates um, that are deterministic. So there's no Monte Carlo simulation going on here. There's an equivalent function that does a full Monte Carlo simulation. It's as easy to use as this uh, example here, but it does take a little bit more time, so I'm not going to show that in this uh, video. Uh, the README for the package has instructions on how you can uh, run the Monte Carlo version of things. The other thing that I wanted to show you is how you can access other variables inside these models. So maybe you want to figure out what is actually the temperature profile uh, that DICE was using when it was computing this uh, particular social cost of carbon here. And to do that, we're going to um, uh, use a new uh, function where, and, uh, that is called MIMI IWG get model. And it's going to give us a particular uh, model. And so we're going to again say we want a DICE model and we want it for the USG1 scenario. And then we're going to assign that model to a local variable called m. Uh, so m now contains an instance of this model. Uh, we next want to run m so that everything gets computed. So that's already done. DICE is not very computationally uh, uh, complicated. Um, and uh, now we want to use a graphical user interface uh, that Mimi provides to explore the variables and values inside this model. Now here we have to uh, do one more thing um, because we haven't actually installed Mimi in such a way that we can easily access it. But that's very simple. We at this point just go back into our package editor, package uh, REPL, uh, and we just say add Mimi as another package that we want to have available uh, and easily accessible from the command line uh, for the from the Julia uh, uh, interface here. So once we've done that, we can now write using Mimi uh, so that we load Mimi into our currently running instance here. Uh, and at this point, we have access to another function is, that's called explore, explorer, and we can explore the model M that we just ran. It's actually called explore and not explorer. 
So we explore this model M, and as we do that, a graphical user interface uh, shows up here. Uh, and you can see all the variables and parameters that um, are in this uh, particular model, namely the dice model. If you do the same exercise for the fund model, you get all the variables and parameters for the fund model, and then equally you can do the same thing for the page model, of course. So let's uh, see whether we can find the atmospheric temperature here. So it's in the climate dynamics component, and the uh, TATM uh, is the temperature in the atmosphere in DICE. So if we click on that, uh, then we can, and I'll make this a little bit bigger here, then you can see here that we automatically uh, show you a plot of the temperature profile that was used in the computation for the social cost of carbon that we just saw. So this is the temperature profile that we've seen here. Now note that this is uh, uh, running for quite a long time. It's running up to the year 2400. If we want to filter this down and only show uh, results for a smaller uh, time period, we can select a smaller time window down here. Um, and then it only shows us the temperature profile for uh, this century, for example. So we can see that in this run here, uh, DICE uh, runs to a warming of about 4 degrees Celsius at the end of the century. Okay, so this was a, a short demonstration of uh, how easy it is to rerun the complete replication exercise for the social, official US uh, social cost of carbon estimate. Um, but it also was really just scratching the surface. So here are some tips on what you can do next if you want to explore this uh, more. So first of all, I encourage you uh, to go to our uh, homepage for the MIMI framework. Um, I'm going to post a link to that in the description under this video here. Uh, and on that homepage, we have documentation for the framework that can really help you explore more aspects of this MIMI platform uh, and the uh, replication exercise. So that's my, my first uh, piece of advice. We also have an active online forum for the MIMI platform. So if you run into technical difficulties with any of this, you can uh, go to that online forum and we hang out there and we respond to questions if you have any of them. Uh, I would also recommend that you install a couple more pieces of software to, uh, so that you have a slightly more powerful Julia environment. What I showed you today was all on the command line. That is sort of the most basic and most simple approach, but you probably want to use a proper editor and maybe a notebook interface. Uh, my recommendation for that, for the editor, would be that you use Visual Studio Code um, from Microsoft and install the Julia extension inside Visual Studio Code. At the moment, that gives you the most uh, feature-complete and powerful editing environment for the Julia language. Uh, the second piece of software I would recommend you install is uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, you're probably familiar with Jupyter in general, uh, and you can install integration so that Julia runs inside Jupyter Notebooks. And that's also a really excellent environment to do interactive exploration of MIMI models and, and uh, uh, much other uh, data science uh, work. I hope this was helpful, this video. Um, do let us know uh, how things go. Uh, we'd love to hear uh, feedback from you. And uh, we hope that you can use this piece of software to uh, understand what EPA and the federal government did a couple of years ago when they computed the social cost of carbon.